So let's look at the fates of ultrasound waves in matter. What are the principal fates that ultrasound can go undergo in living tissue? We're focusing here on living tissue, of course. Um, so number one, we have attenuation. If you have matter, the ultrasound or the sound waves will not just go on forever. I think that's the principle of soundproofing. That's the principle of your apartment, so you don't hear too much what's going on in the neighbor's apartment or your roommate next door. So the sound wave travels through the substance, but it loses energy as a function of space. So here's my object. Here's the sound wave going in. It, it has a certain intensity. And once it's passed through the object, it has lost in intensity. And that is described by a simple exponential law with some factors to consider in the exponent. So we have the initial intensity, and then as a function for a homogeneous object, as a function of space, this intensity decreases exponentially. So what are these factors that we have there in the exponent? We have the affectation coefficient alpha, which is given in decibels per centimeter per megahertz. So decibels per centimeter makes sense. It's the attenuation per centimeter. For units, we need that. And then it's per megahertz um, because it is frequency dependent. Usually, it's given in the units of decibel. And the decibel here for, for, for energy is 10 times the logarithm of the ratio of the intensity divided by the original intensity. So what does this mean? Um, for physicists, decibel is a horrible unit. For engineers, less so. Much of engineering is done. And I always have difficulty figuring out what is decibel, so I wrote it here. So three decibels corresponds to a twofold attenuation. That's easy to remember. Six decibels is fourfold, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just to give you an idea what this means. Then we have a unit conversion factor. So we have alpha. We have the unit conversion factor k. That's logarithm, natural logarithm of 10 divided by 10. That's just that the equation works between the unit of decibel and this exponen exponential law. So typically, what one has is about a half a decibel per centimeter per megahertz. And of course, f here is the frequency. Forgot to mention that. So we have the attenuation coefficient, conversion factor, the position, and the frequency. So in units, this gives us something per frequency times frequency. So it's attenuation per centimeter times centimeter. This has to be without units. So that works quite nicely. So what is an attenuation coefficient of a half a dB per centimeter per megahertz mean. We'll give you an example now. It means that a six megahertz signal will lose three dB of intensity per centimeter of travel. So that's a two-fold loss in wave energy. That's what this roughly means. OK, so that's the first fate. The, the ultrasound waves are attenuated in the tissue. So here are some attenuation coefficients for different materials. So water, it's very weak, hence the orca, hence the boat. In blood, it's a bit stronger. Tissue, 0.7 in this example. Bone, much higher. And in the lung, it's 40, so very high attenuation. The second fate is refraction. So refraction means if the sound wave hits an interface that's oblique, it's deviated. OK, now what does it mean, hit an interface? You can just think of normal sound. You've got a wall, you talk to the wall, your sound wave is going to be reflected. A good lecture hall, a good concert hall has very good sound properties, is very well constructed, so that the sound from the orchestra is very well represented in, with the audience. Same one would hope here for the lecture hall. But as I'm speaking here, the sound from the speakers is also being refracted by all the different surfaces. So here's the incoming wave, and then it is deviated because it hits it at an oblique angle. The third fate that I'm going to mention, now this, the, the refraction, we're not going to deal with it too much. I'm just mentioning it here for completeness sake. So we have covered the main fates of ultrasound. What is scatter? Scatter means the sound wave is dispersed in all directions. 
So here's an example. Here's my object. The sound wave hits it, and then it's split up in all sorts of directions and scattered. Therefore, scatter. OK, so we've got three interactions, and the fourth one is reflection. So the sound wave bounces back to the observer or to the probe in the case of imaging. So here's again my object. Sound wave comes in and is bounced back. OK, you've all actually pretty much used this before. Ever remember the moments you're somewhere in a tunnel and you holler and he comes back to you? Done that? No? In the mountains, sometimes in front of a big vertical wall, you holler and then you, it comes back to you. That is reflection. OK, now in soft tissue, we're going to have a similar situation. That's an extreme case, the interface air to mountain, for example, or in the tunnel. And reflection is the key mechanism by which ultrasound is used to image the tissue. That's the effect that we want. That's the effect that one uses to produce images. Refraction scatter produce distorted images or worse, noisy images. And attenuation weakens the signal and also produces noisy images. So that's actually the unwanted part. What we really would want is a situation where we would have tissue where there's no refraction, there's no scatter, no attenuation, just reflection. That would be ideal. Ideal doesn't exist, so we have to leave with the others. But for the course, we're going to deal with attenuation and reflection. The other two we're not going to talk more about. 